So we're gonna be doing the wiring harness. Uh, this is gonna be, obviously this is part one. I'm just gonna go through what the functions are on this particular ECU and the similarities to other ECUs. I'm just gonna tell you what each of these things do and what they mean. So that way it's easy for everybody to understand whenever they're doing their own ECUs and stuff. The brand, this, this doesn't matter. The brand doesn't matter. The wiring itself is going to be universal to the ECU. Like it doesn't matter what ECU it is. All of these are going to be the same across other ECUs. Now, sometimes uh, the ECUs will have much more pinouts, so it's gonna be a lot easier to uh, add things. There, there will be a lot more options to be used, and uh, there's gonna be a lot more things that the ECU can accept. So this is just a basic ECU Master Classic. We've got uh, two connectors with 24 pins each. Some things will have way more, like the ECU Master Pro had like 90 pins, and then the EMU Black has uh, another connector that has, or that it's got a black connector that has um, another, I think it's a 36 pin connector. So there's a substantial amount more on there and it, it can accept more outputs and inputs and auxiliaries. And then also there's another power ground and some sensor grounds. What we're gonna be doing is going over this one. It's gonna be the basics of the wiring that you are gonna be using to actually get the engine running. So it's gonna be all the necessities and uh, any of the extra stuff, if you're trying to turn in a rotary dial or a rotary switch or whatever for like boost control, that's gonna be extra stuff. It's all gonna be, obviously you can put that in and run an auxiliary to it and stuff. So I'm gonna be going through this. It's gonna be a rather quick video, but I just wanna get this, uh, make this uh, straight forward. Obviously I don't have another one of these papers here. So we're gonna be starting on the black connector. And the way that you're gonna be looking at this, and hopefully a lot of the pinouts on other ECUs are the same, you're gonna be looking at this like you're looking at the front of the ECU. So it's gonna be like this. You got the vacuum port here for the map sensor, and then you're looking at the back of the connector. This is how we look at them. The very first thing, this is going to be pin one. Pin one is all the way on the top left. It's going to be numbered. You can see these are one through eight nine through 16 and 17 through 24 and it's going to be exactly the same up here there is no rocket science here it's a, it is exactly as it's listed like it it's very very easy and uh it's it's not hard guys i'm gonna try to help you guys get through this it's a fairly easy job to do all right so starting out on the black connector we're gonna start with number one this is the egt this is exhaust gas temp there should be two of these on uh, most of them. Uh, we've got knock sensor number one, and then there's also a knock sensor number two. These are obviously the knock sensors on the front and back side of the 2JZ block. You can also use just the single knock sensor if you're using uh, on a 4G63, any engines that have a single knock sensor. You got analog in. They are all inputs from pressure sensors, uh, any kind of uh, gauges. If you have like, a, there's an analog wire off AEM gauges, you can run to the ECU and the ECU will read directly from it. So all the analogs you've got uh, multiple analogs on the actual on the actual ECU itself that you can uh, tap into and run your oil pressure, your fuel pressure, things like that. Uh, got coolant temp. This is a necessary one. This actually reads just your coolant temp for the engine. Uh, this is not for your dash. This is actually for the ECU. Uh, wideband. Once you get to the wideband out, you'll have a little pinout down here. That's for the wideband. Uh, there's a connector, which is this guy right here. You'll be able to uh, use. And this is the pinout for the actual Bosch uh, sensor. So what I do whenever I'm looking at this, you're going to look at this as if you're looking at into the connector for the actual O2. So you'll be looking through the back side of this. Um, also, this connector here will be numbered. So there's 246 right there. And then there's 135 on the bottom. And then just right here, it's the same thing. So you're looking at it backwards. Uh, you're going to be looking at it from the back side. So 642, 642. And then the numbers... They are colored. The, mat, the wiring on the actual O2 sensor does not matter, so do not follow the wiring. Number six is gonna be wideband output, it's the IP. And then uh, all of these are going to be, all of these will be listed on here. These are going to be what's pinned here. There's also numbers. So the wideband output IP is number 13. So right here, you can see these are gray. They're gray on the actual pinout itself too. So when you're pinning the, O2 sensor, you're going to be pinning these pins right here. Make sure they're matching this, and then make sure these are pinned to the actual ECU. They are numbered right here on the side, and you will find those numbers on the actual pinouts between the black and the gray connector. Next, we're going to have the cam sync. Cam sync number two. So 
You'll have cam sync number one, cam sync number two. These are important. They are the secondary triggers. So these are the cam sensors. Cam sync number one is the most important one out of the two. This one is going to go to your primary cam sensor. On a 1JZ or a 2JZ GTE non-VVTI, you will have two cam sensors. So there's one in the front, one in the back. You can run both or you can just run the one. I've always only ever ran the one and then you can use cam sync two as an input or a trigger or something to activate like rolling anti-lag or a two-step. You can use it like that. There's a pull up in the ECU that it makes it a five volt switch. Uh, number seven, that is a primary trigger. This is the most important one. This is for your crank sensor. So you're gonna run your crank sensor directly to this. Number eight, we've got the ignition coil. You'll notice that on the outsides of these, these are actually the big pins. You can see on both both sides right here and then on the other side there are large pins these are the ones that you want to have a really good continuity to so we've got on the outside we've got 8 and 16 1 9 8 and 16 those are on the edges you'll remember that they are the fat pins so those are going to be the yellow ones will all be your ignition coil so ignition coil 1 through 6 on this particular ECU it only has outputs for 6 and then uh on the EMU Black, there's outputs for eight, and then the Pro, you've got outputs for up to 16. So, just like on any other ECU, it's the same thing. If you are, for whatever reason, trying to run like a V12 on this or something, you can actually tie pairs of coils together in order to fire your cylinders. They will just double fire. Uh, we've got an EGT number two, so that is the secondary bank for the EGT if you're running multiple sensors. Knock sensor number two, same thing as knock sensor number one. That is just your second knock sensor, whatever you wire in. Uh, another analog, so obviously same thing as uh, analog number two, which is up here. Now we've got your TPS, so your throttle position sensor. This is the one's also important. This is going to measure the throttle opening of your actual throttle body. So obviously you want it to be functional so that way your, your ECU can tell where at your foot is on the pedal so it can uh, put in the right fuel mixture and uh, set you. you can actually set ignition and stuff with it also. There's another wideband. VSS, this is your um, vehicle speed sensor. So if you have your speed sensor from your transmission or a wheel or a diff, you can run an input into here and then the ECU will read speed of the vehicle. Very, very uh, useful for if you're trying to use launch control, then you can just have launch control always active and then launch control will turn off when you get to a certain speed. Cam sync number one, just like we talked with one number two. This one is the important one. You always wanna make sure your cam sensor is going to this one. This is the one that will actually start your car. Another ignition coil, ECU ground. Uh, this is actually the ground for the ECU itself. You just ground it to a chassis. Uh, sensor ground, this one is very important. This is the ground that you will ground all of your sensors to. So you'll have a sensor ground on your TPS, you'll have a sensor ground on your coolant temp, and you'll have a sensor ground on your IAT. The sensor ground is a ground that will go directly to the ECU and it separates from the actual battery ground and the chassis ground because of the same thing. It reduces a crap ton of noise so that way the ECU can see directly to the sensors and not have mistaked uh, voltage readings. So you're gonna make, make sure that your sensor ground is going directly to your sensors and then uh, you'll have multiple, obviously there'll be a two wire. So this is an IAT sensor. So we've got two pins. One of them will be your sensor ground and it will be tied together. It's okay to tie them together. So you'll have three sensor grounds, but you'll only have one sensor ground here pin on this. On the EMU black, you'll have a second sensor ground. And then on the other ECUs, there might be other sensor grounds and you can just individualize your sensors to the sensor ground pin. But on this, you will actually have one pin go to your actual sensor ground and then you will just uh, Y off of it and uh, whatever, however many sensors that you have only because you only have this one. And it, it's, there's no problem with that. There's no load on it. All it is is just a noiseless ground from the actual ECU, which is very important. More analogs. Number 21 is the IET. This is your intake air temp. This one is very important for uh, your air density and the, the just how hot and cold the air is in your actual charge pipe or whatever you're doing. You can run this on and on a uh, naturally aspirated engine as well. So it's very important you get those readings. For an engine that's way too hot, you might wanna add a little bit more fuel to cool it down because that means a lot. And if it's uh, too cold, do the same thing. Uh, sometimes metallurgy is a little bit weird. Also with cold air, 
the air gets more dense and then you want to add some uh, fuel to it. So with an IAT sensor, you can adjust, you can have a little map for your IAT that will add fuel for cold temperatures and stuff like that. Sometimes you'll gain rich and lean conditions depending on the temperatures in your charge pipe if you're not running an IAT, so it's pretty important. Another wideband, a uh, five volt supply. This one is very important. Do not get this mixed up with a 12 volt because that is a one way to destroy your ECU or destroy some sensors. On a TPS, it is a reading between a zero to five volt uh, signal. So it'll get its reading depending on the voltage frequency. So it can go anywhere from 0 0.01 volts all the way to 4.99 volts, uh, sometimes five volts, and you can get anywhere in between. Um, that five volt system is a TPS deal on this if you're doing a very basic setup, but there's also other things. You can run a five volt, you'll run five volt to your uh, any of your OT or uh, pressure sensors. If you're running a standalone pressure sensor for the actual ECU itself, if you have no gauges, sometimes those little uh, 150 PSI sensors that AEM offer and other companies offer will have a five volt sensor in there. So that way, whenever it's starting to have pressure pushed against the sensor, it will change voltage. And then that's how the ECU will read it. So make sure you are 100% not getting this mixed up. This is a, this one's a very important one. Do not let 12 volt get put to this. This is a supply, not an input. So this goes to your sensors. You also want to plan this out before you start your wiring. It's very important to plan this out. Some of the sensors will take 12 volt. So like your injectors, they're not sensors, but they're little switches. You want to make sure that you've got six individual injectors. They'll go to the ECU, but then the second pin will be a 12 volt. So you're going to want to make sure you're planning ahead of this before you start throwing your harness together and then realize after you're finished, you don't have 12 volts to the actual uh, injectors or your coils. If you're running your coil system through your actual engine harness. So right here, we've got a power ground. This is exactly what this is. I will take this one and this one and then this one up here. I will just ground them to the chassis. Uh, they're just power grounds. So same thing with the ECU ground. I will just ground them all together and it works fine. Now we're going to go to the gray connector. The black connector is finished. And like I said, some ECUs will have far more inputs and auxiliaries. So some people will have like a drive-by wire setup or, or they'll have six individual EGTs or 17 different pressure sensors. I mean, you, you can have temperature sensors and in your fuel and things like that. It's very important. Number one on the gray connector, we've got ignition coil six. Same thing with all these other ones. They are the outside pins to so make sure that you are not putting your small pins on the outside of that. So here we've got the small pins and then these are my injector. These are the coils. So then these are great big pins and you can see the physical difference. Obviously this is just uh, ECU master specific. So do not t take this to heart if you're trying to learn to do a Haltech or something. Just everything that I'm showing you here is going to carry over to other ECU pinouts. Uh, so stepper, this is uh, another a couple important ones. So you got stepper motor, um, two, three, 10, and 11. These are for your idle air control valves. Sometimes your idle air controls will have a lot of connect or a lot of pins on them. Uh, the stock Jay-Z ones actually have six pins on them and you'll have to use all of these in order to make it work. Or you can get a two, a two wire one that's an on off switch and you can make things work that way. But these are directly for that. And then on some ECUs, you can use these as switches also. We've got here, number four and five, we've got auxiliaries. All the auxiliaries will be on the gray connector. Auxiliaries are for your, anything that you want to be activated by the ECU. So let's say you want your fuel pump to prime, you're gonna run an auxiliary to your fuel pump. You'll turn the key on, the fuel pump will turn on in prime. And then when you turn the key over and then the ECU is reading that it is synchronized between the cam and crank sensors or just synchronized in general, ready to start going, it'll turn the fuel pump on and then the fuel pump will stay active. A lot of times people will just have the fuel pump ran directly to your ignition switch and then the fuel pump will stay on indefinitely, but this is a good way to cancel that out. Auxiliaries are also good for your uh, coolant temp fans. So you can have your fans ran to uh, relays and then in the ECU you can set up your temperatures to have the fans turn on and then when to turn them off. There's just a lot of different cool things that you do that you can do with auxiliaries. You can have lights and stuff attached to them and have lights turn on. You can have your dash dashes and stuff uh, activate using auxiliaries. Um, there's also you can uh, this is how you will run your tachometer on an ECU master. On uh, other ECUs, it might be different. 
you can run a tack wire out. Uh, these are all outputs, so you'll have a tachometer wire come from here and go to the actual dash, and then your tack will start working. There's a lot of things that you can do with these, just a lot of things that you can explore. If you can turn it on, the ECU can do it. Now we're going to get to the injectors, or the, the gray connector has all the injectors on there. They're all set on top of each other right there in the green. So injector number four, they're one through six. Same thing as the coils. There's only six outputs for injectors. Uh, now we've got more coils, the stepper motors again, more auxiliaries, more injectors, ignition coil again, the power ground, which you the ground to the chassis, 12 volt. Yeah, make sure this 12 volt is on a fuse. It's uh, exactly as it is, 12 volt input. Make sure it's a switched 12 volt input. Uh, make sure you're paying attention to this. Some ECUs will require multiple 12 volts, like the ECU Master Black will have two 12 volts. One will be a 12 volt constant, one will be a 12 volt uh, switched. So you'll make sure that uh, those are fused and make sure you're doing exactly as they say. Uh, we got a wideband output heater again, more auxiliaries, more injectors, and then another power ground. And uh, that is pretty much the basis of how you would wire up your uh, harness based off your pinout on your uh, ECU. It's a uh, fairly simple. Um, when you're trying to learn the pinouts, if you're trying to pin a factory harness into this, the the actual names of some of the sensors on the wiring on the uh, like factory harness uh, pinouts are a little bit odd. So sometimes they will have code names, and you, you'll just have to do some research and figure those things out. Um, sometimes they're directly. Uh, they're directly named and then you can understand it there it is guys we will be getting the actual full harness complete and uh getting it ready for this car but this is the actual rundown on the actual pinouts for the ecu and remember this is not as hard as you think do not overthink it and if you're using a different ecu this will still help you the uh Names may be a little bit different, but a little bit of uh, research will help you out on, in the long run. Stay tuned for the actual wiring harness build, which is going to be stressful because uh, sometimes I like to do this without filming, but I've promised you guys all that I will be filming it. So it's going to be rather stressful, but it will be worth it, and I hope that is going to be helping you guys out. So if you guys are fresh to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. This car is going to be insane, as it always is, and stay tuned for the next videos. Bye.